how to optimize your GDPR standard. So we found out at the beginning, uh, most of you are still in the beginning or middle of your GDPR journey. So that's a good. So you may excite to know some of the best practices. Right? Um, yeah. So before I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, so I'm, as I mentioned, I'm a director at WSO2. So, and I'm a technical guy. Uh, I'm mainly focused on uh, identity and access management related uh, product and offering at WSO2. And also, in recent past, I have been heavily worked with to get WSO platform to become class in GDPR. And also, I was a member of a team work to get WSO2 as a business to be in with GDPR. Now, apart from my day job, I have been a very long term contributor to open source projects. I have been, a, uh, I played a number of roles in Apache Software Foundation. So that's a little bit about my background. Okay, so this is about optimized. So when you optimize, there are two things, right? Uh, what and how. What to optimize and then how to optimize. So in, in, in terms of GDPR, right, uh, so GDPR is very broad, right, it's, it's really hard or nearly impossible uh, to discuss something uh, considering GDPR simple thing. So uh, uh, let's break it down. So, okay. so in, for the simplicity, so let's uh, take it how to optimize time, <coughs> cost, and complexity. So these are the one of the main three factors. We are going to discuss how to optimize time, cost, and complexity of your GDPR strategy. So next one. So again, uh, so I'm going to break it down GDPR also into several aspects, mainly three: people, technology, and process. And then I will narrow down my scope into technology because, as I mentioned, I'm a technical guy. So I'm not expert in talking about HR side or people side or other side. Okay, uh, and we are going to discuss three patterns, right? Or three best practices. So first, let's start with the first one, right? So this is a typical uh, oversimplified advice system, right? You can imagine your systems in your organization. Most of the time, it looks like this, right? Uh, so you may have a sales application, delivery application. HR, payroll, it's rather, you may have many number of applications. Right? This is an oversimplified example. So what I want to emphasize in this sample is, all this application, you have a user management module. Or you have to manage people or users. That is a compulsory requirement. Because, for example, sales application. Sales application meant to handle your sales and track the sales. But, people have to log in and perform these sales. And also, when you make a transaction, you need to track who is responsible, or who is this person, and so on. So in, in operational level, you need this data. Same thing, delivery application. Delivery application is meant to deliver the goods. But in order to deliver these things, you need some delivery actors, delivery person, and so on. So in practical use cases, almost any application you need user management model. That end up, you are replicating or you are duplicating your personal info information, or personal identifying information in many systems within your organization. So this is the current picture of most of the enterprise systems today. Now, so what's the problem with that? So as obvious, since you are duplicating personal data in several places, you have, in terms of GDPR compliance, now you have to apply uh, data protection each and every point. So in this case, it's, it's a four point, right? And also, uh, number of personal data points means that increase the chance of data breach. If an attacker can attack any of these points, they can get personal information. So that increases the chance of data breach. And also, uh, if somebody asks, you know, GDPR is a hard uh, rule that if somebody requests to remove their data from your system, unless you have any uh, legal background, you have to uh, do that, right? But if, if you are, if you keep your data in four places, now you have to remove this data, right? And it, it leads to the data synchronization problems, right? So 
these are some of the drawbacks of this system. So what's the solution? The solution is, what you can do is, you can move all of your personal information, basically what you call as identity or user data, into a separate system. Right? Instead of uh, duplicating in other business level applications. Right? Then, whenever this application, for example, in our case, sales application or delivery application want to get this identity data or user data, they can look up from this centralized module. Usually through uh, secure tokens. In industry, there are uh, industry-wise pool and secure token. We call that SAML, uh, Open ID Connect, and so on. There are security standards. So based on the standard, they can get uh, this personal information in on-demand manner. And also, this token are temporary basis. You are, you are not storing this personal information in sales application or mineral application. Basically, whenever you want to do that, you ask uh, the central guy, get the information for this particular person, and you consume it, and that's it. Right? So what's the advantage? So what's the advantage done with this uh, pattern? So basically, as you can see, this reduces the development cost and maintenance cost because <coughs> now your personal data are stored in only single point. So now you have to protect only that point. And if there are future compliance requirements are emerging, so what you have to do is you have to modify or you have to maintain only that point. So that is the first advantage. Now, second one is this reduces the complexity of the system. And also, obviously, this reduces the data breach because now attacker has to come to this central point, right? Attacking the sales application or delivery application, that must mean they can obviously get the personal information, right? Uh, and also, this with this architecture, you can easily adapt to future improvements because if you want to bring a new system, you don't need to uh, replicate your user information. Instead, you can easily bring the new system. Okay, so this is working very well. Now, some of you wonder, uh, my organization use number of cloud applications. In today's world, it's, it's more obvious. As a business, WS2, we also use number of cloud applications, and we have seen most of our customers are using large number of cloud applications. In, in such a scenario, how it works? So for example, if you have, a, let's say, a, you use a cloud vendor to manage your sales or your tickets and so on. In such a scenario, you may have to provision your user information to those cloud vendors. Right? But uh, that's, that is not no longer the case. Right? Most of the cloud vendors, at least what I have shown in this diagram, are support to previous patterns. That is, if you have your uh, user and access management module within your organization, right? Uh, you can introduce that system into cloud vendor, right? So that whenever, for example, let, let me take example Salesforce. So once you configure your corporate user and access management system with the Salesforce, whenever someone log into your organization through Salesforce, they will redirect the organization user management module. They are the users get authenticated and authorized, and then your centralized uh, use and access management guy provides the CPU token to Salesforce. In that pattern, Salesforce does not store your personal information. Because uh, so if, if you want to move your personal information to third party application, that's the picture is getting very really complicated. Some some cases it's, it's, that's resulting in post border transfers uh, love, right? Uh, so, so how to practice this? So, the previous one is the patterns, then how to practice this? There are two ways, basically. So what you can do is you can develop your own goal again, uh, user management system. That is technically easy. Second one is you can deploy uh, out of the box available identity and access management solutions. Right. So let's briefly look at the pros and cons. So if you decide to build your own system, uh, so that that will better fit your organizational goals because you design from the stage, and also with your business is evolving, you can easily customize and evolve the, uh, your system. The, but the cons are uh, so it 
it will take considerable amount of time and cost because we have to start from the beginning. And also, you need some technical skills. For example, even the GDPR or, or a lot of privacy stand, they encourage to have a lot of privacy stands. Like, you need to have proper cryptographic libraries and you have to update with each and every uh, the vulnerability found by researchers and so on. So you, you, you have to keep investing on specialized technical skills. And also, it's less support for industry standards. Right? And so these are the, some you know, drawbacks or uh, and pros and cons of this first step. So if you go to second approach, that is, uh, you get a out of the box available IAM solution. The pros are so it's out of most of the features are out of the box available. So it's a cost and time optimization. That's the first thing. Then you don't need uh, the specialized skills because usually these vendors or community, in, in case of open source project, the community, they take care about maintenance of these uh, solutions. And also, it, most of the support for out of the box industry standards. And the vendor and community provide security updates. Whenever researchers found a security vulnerability, usually vendors and also the community behind these projects provide the security update. And the, the cons are like, uh, in most of the cases, these are very generic products, so you need to do some customization according to your uh, organization policies and uh, your business process. And you need to do, write some uh, extension as well. And also, uh, some, in some cases, this can cause uh, vendor lock. That means you may have to lock with a particular vendor forever, or it's hard to get rid of this particular vendor. So these are some pros and cons. So moving to the second one. The first one is, what I mentioned is, uh, how you could uh, separate your personal information from other business data. The second pattern is concern management. So I'm not going to discuss much about concern management because we had very detailed session earlier. So in basically, so this these are some of the requirements for concern usage in GDPR. Uh, so it, it, it is one of the uh, six lawful means of data processing. And if that is the right model for you, your organization, then so before you collect any personal data, you are supposed to get consent. And if you want to share this information, personal information with some other system, then again you have to uh, get the consent, right? And also, all of your personal data processing, for example, let's say you are sending an email to about your product updates or your uh, new releases and so on. In such a cases, you have to make sure you have a consent in place, right? And as organization, whenever required, you should be able to demonstrate you have a legitimate consent, right? And also, again, as an organization, you should facilitate individuals to review what's the already given consent, and if required, revoke them. So these are some of the requirements uh, related to GDPR around consent and HP. So for, to facilitate these things in technical means, you need something called consent lifecycle management. Right? It's not just a consent, now you need the full consent lifecycle management feature. So that should facilitate consent capture. So whenever you want, the system should be capable to capture the consent. And also, it should uh, support for consent storing, and also it should facilitate each and every individual to review what's the consent they have given and revoke it, and also consent portability. So it's, that's, that's kind of an industry requirements. There are some specifications also coming out uh, from Kantara Institute, like how to uh, uh, interoperable one consent to another, or one organization to another, for example, especially in financial sector. So this is going on a moment, like once you give a consent to one bank and how to Government or how to port that to another bank and so on. That is the consent port. Other one is the consent API. So this is, okay, let me explain what is this required. For example, uh, if you, let's say, you, you want to send some emails about your product updates or you, you are launching a new um, store or you are launching a new product series, now you want to send set of emails. Right? You have some sort of an email sending software system in place. But 
with GDPR, before you do that, you have to make sure each and every recipient given a consent to do that. So that means you need to have some interaction between your email <coughs> system and the consent management system. For that, you need to have a standard API. Uh, API means application interface. Standard API uh, within your uh, consent management system so that other systems can interact and get the information. So again, uh, so uh, how to fight this is again, like in earlier case, you are free to develop your own homegrown system or you can uh, deploy a, a life uh, consent lifecycle management solution. St that is the second part. The third one is individual rights. So again, this this is again huge list. I'm not going to discuss. I think most of you are aware about right to be informed, right to access. So you are this is this is not a choice, right? If if you are collecting personal information, you are responsible to provide these individual rights. So how to do that? Right? So one way to do that is you can allocate a set of people, like the staff members, to attend this. Or second choice is you can build some software, something called self-care portal, so that people can attend to these services themselves. So that is really uh, uh, got a lot of advantage over the first time. So for that, what you need is a self-care user portal in place. Right? So that usually the self-care portal, using this self-care portal, they can uh, do a lot of uh, their Processing. For example, if somebody wants to change their phone number, if they want to make a restriction on processing, they can log into the self care portal and make those things. So again, uh, so this, these are the features like individual can access, modify, and remove their personal information, and also they can submit uh, the forget any request and so on. And how to practice? Like in again, previous case, you are free to develop your own portal, right? And also you can bring uh, IEM solution. Most of the modern identity and access management solutions out of the box provide a uh, self PR user portals. So, so let me, so these are the three patterns I want to discuss. So let, let me summarize. So we discuss, the, we break down uh, the GDPR into three areas like technology, process, and people. So then we focus only on the technology side of it. Under the technology side, we discuss uh, three best practices for three patterns. So the first one is you should think about how to separate your personal information from other data. Right? That's the first pattern. Second one is you need to have or you need to deploy a consent life cycle management solution. So the second one, the third one is you need self-care portal. A user self-care portal so that uh, individuals can exercise their individual rights. These are the three patterns we discuss. And when it comes to execution, right? So we have two choices. So the first choice is you can build your own Hong Kong system. The second one is you can deploy IAM solution that will grant you know, all these three features to you. You just have to do, the fact is speaking, you have, you have to do some customization and some extensions because uh, so I'm from a company we, that we offer an IAM solution. So that whenever someone bought that uh, application, they have to do some uh, uh, customizations and uh, some extension in order to comply with their organization requirement and policies. So these are the two choices. Uh, so, so I'm not going to uh, say the, the, this is the best one or other one way around. We sort of what I'm asking is, uh, so these are the two choices. So you have to evaluate your requirement and you have to pick what's the right uh, uh, selection for your organization. Yeah, with that, uh, I'll conclude that. So I think